Hey, welcome to the Vortex Garage and take two of this intro. We've already got our vibe up in the air. And uh, what we're doing today is we're gonna knock out a few mechanical jobs. We're also gonna do a transmission service on it. We're gonna drop the pan and put a new filter on. About 90,000 miles, we're not gonna do a flush service. We're just gonna do a drain and fill on it. And we're gonna use the, the recommended type four fluid. We'll talk about that a little bit in a second. Also picked up some spark plugs. These are the OEM style iridiums. Again, 90,000 miles. They're probably fine being iridiums, but we'll go ahead and get them done for maintenance so that hopefully this thing does a lot of trouble-free miles without coming back to the shop. So we got it up here on the lift. Let's go ahead and work on getting the uh, transmission fluid out. So the first thing, you've got your transmission dipstick down here and uh, it's super easy to get to. And if we take a look at that, but the fluid is actually above, this is the hot line, the fluid is even higher up there. And the reason is, is that the pump runs on the transmission and cycles the fluid. When the vehicle's off, all that fluid is in the pan and it's very difficult to get an accurate reading. So most transmissions, you actually get the reading on the dipstick while it's running in neutral or in park. So just bear that in mind. So, but we're gonna go ahead and just pop this open so that there's, uh, you know, in case it needs to displace any air as we're draining. And then we'll go ahead and get this thing up in the air. All right, so what we're going to do on our drain pan here, we're not going to remove all these bolts just yet. There's 18, I think, of these uh, pan bolts. But Toyota's nice enough to give you a drain plug. So we're going to go ahead and loosen that drain plug. We're going to position our bucket so we're ready to capture it. There we go. But I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these uh, one quart containers. And I want to try to record how much comes out just for, just for fun. Um, looking in the bucket, it looks like 3.3 quarts on a drain and fill, but I am going to drop the filter. So I'm curious if any more comes out there. So don't worry about the drain plug. It's going to go into our bucket. Okay, and then we'll switch. So that's one quart. All right, and that's two quarts, thereabouts. All right, so this is gonna be three quarts and it's starting to slow down. So this should be a third of a quart. And now it's dying down, so. One of the reasons I'm doing this is this will help me target exactly what to put back in. Whatever comes out is uh, the ballpark for what I put in. And then when I go to test it, it'll be a lot easier. A lot of times when you do this on other cars, we got to drain the pan. It's really hard to capture and know the volume that you took out. And unless you got the serviceman that clearly states how much to put in, you just got to kind of guess and then run the car and, you know, preferably start a little low and add a little more until you get to perfect. All right, this is topping out at, at 20 ounces. So that's three quarts, 20 ounces. All right, let's see, these are probably 10 millimeter, and they are. And oh, look, they left a little indentation so I can use a full size socket. That's nice. Oh, that's not in tight. I just remember that. Don't forget that. I'm just putting that in for right now. And I'm going to go around and I'm going to start, start loosening these. Uh, looks like I do need to remove this uh, shield here. It'll be really fun because this looks pretty rusty. Huh. Ugh. The way it just came out there is so gross. All these are bad. I just want to move this out of the way so I can get to my bolts. So we got one, two, three left. Let me go ahead and take this one off. 
And then we're going to get a little dripping out the back of our pan, which would be a waterfall in the normal sense of things. Oops. All right, last one. Okay, now we should be able to go ahead and pop our pan off. And I'm capturing the fluid in my buckets, actually. I know it's hard to see. But uh, there's actually a sizable amount of fluid left in here. So it looks like the drain still leaves some in the pan, quite a bit in the pan. I think that's going to take us to about the four quart mark. Let me see if I can manipulate the camera. Okay. And we'll take a look here. So inside here, very dark in there, but you've got a couple of magnets, one there, one there, and They'll have a little bit of clutch material on them. And you can see here, there's just a little bit. We'll show you with the other camera. All right, so here is our pan and uh, we're still dripping a little bit out of our transmission into the pan. That's no big deal. So here is our filter. There's our filter right here. And there are three bolts that hold it in. Those look to be either 10 millimeter or eight millimeter, just looking through the viewfinder of the camera. So there's three, we'll take that out. But while we got the pan dropped, you, what you're going to want to do, we're going to come through and clean this out. But uh, you can see here, here are the little magnets that collect the uh, metallic clutch material. It's normal to have some wear and to have some on here, especially with 90,000 miles. If these things were like just full, like mushroomed out with this stuff, you might be seeing a problem. But if you can see here, see, there's just a little bit on there. It's not too bad. Same with that one. That's actually really good. Now the fluid itself isn't as red and nice as I'd like, which tells me it's probably original. Um, and I think just a drain and fill with a, with a filter service is gonna be adequate for this vehicle. There is a, a train of thought, a lot of people believe against doing a flush if you've never done the fluid. And uh, I, I honestly kind of feel that way myself. I have seen flushes that have ruined the transmission. And I don't think the flush killed the transmission. I think what it was is that the flush and the ATF being a detergent actually cleared out gunk and, and burnt stuff that was in the transmission passages and either clogged something up or, or just basically cleaned things so thoroughly and, and pressure flushed it that it basically took a transmission that was, that was destined to die and killed it. Um, but to alleviate any risk of that, what I like to do when they're aged, they haven't been done routinely, is go ahead and just do a drain and fill. And I've never had any problems with that. All right, let's go ahead and remove our transmission filter. So let's see if it's a 10 millimeter. Yep, it looked like it. So we'll go ahead and remove these bolts. And uh, so I was wrong. The fluid uh, pan bolts are like 48 or 49 inch pounds, and these are 89. So definitely a light torque on the pan. Like that's almost nothing. These are something. All right, these are kind of obviously haven't been off. All right, there we go. All right, so we have our transmission pan below here. So any fluid that comes out, which there should be some, it'll actually get caught in the pan. And then we can go ahead and measure. Again, being exact, we'll put it in exact what was in it. Considering this seems to have been factory fill, I think we'll be doing it just right. See, look at that. This actually pulls down some fluid from the valve body. So I have a feeling we're gonna end up doing about 70% of the fluid just by doing this. You could get more if you pulled the entire valve body out itself, but who, who wants to do that? <laughs> Not me. Well, there should be a little gasket, like a cork gasket of all things. And you're gonna wanna make sure that comes off with this.
Oh, and one of the bolts is longer. So the bolt that goes here is longer than the other two. All right. So here is the little quirk gasket, and it is there. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but and we'll go ahead and fill. So we had four, four quarts, four ounces, and looks like we're adding another, another 10, maybe nine. Now I'm going to say that's 10 all in all. So that's 14 ounces. So almost four and a half quarts out of seven. So 414, remember that. Or pi plus one. All right. All right, now we'll take our new filter. You can see the cork gasket is there. Again, we made sure that it came off of the other one. And we'll just go ahead and pop it up here and get it installed. I'd imagine this is similar in the Corolla. I'm assuming it uses the same transmission. So these steps might be very similar, but you've got to still consult the manual. You never know what little differences there are from year to year. All right. And then we're going to do 89 inch pounds. Eighty nine inch pounds. Eighty nine inch pounds. All right, all done. All right, so we've just cleaned the pan out with some uh, brake cleaner and uh, rag, and we got everything nice and clean. Sprayed some brake cleaner in, we're going to let it dry. But we've also cleaned off our magnets, and they go back in the spots they came out. They just sit in there and they're easy to find. They're marked with these little, little uh, embossed areas here and they fit in those pieces right there. So two magnets. All right, we'll go ahead and let that dry. Otherwise, we've cleaned the area around there. We've got all the gunk off of it and uh, so our gasket surface is ready to go. Our filter comes with a new replacement rubber gasket, so that's what we're going to use. No need for any RTV on this one. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and get our pan reinstalled. We'll do one more double check of our flange here. That's looking good. Lint-free cloth. We've got our rubber gasket on here. I did take a tiny bit of RTV just to kind of hold it on, like super little bits. Like a minuscule amount, you could barely even see it. So now I just got to line this up. Make sure I don't disturb the gasket too much. And then we've got four bolts. Get one kind of on either side. And that'll hold it up. And the, you don't want to let it hang on just one and like bend the flange. Then you'll have leaks. And you also want to make sure these go in by hand. Just come along, get them finger tight. All right, now we'll do that for the rest of them. All right, so I just got the thread started by hand. And then I can come along, and it's just easier to twist them in with this. All right, that's 48, 48 inch pounds, that's nothing. That's it, let's do the four corners. All right, now we're just gonna go, go along and torque every single one of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 
14, 15, 16, 17, All right, now we're ready to go ahead and refill our transmission. We've got the correct fluid. This is an Eisen brand, or Eisen, I don't know how to do the pronunciationes, um, but this is T4, T-4 fluid, which is the correct fluid for this vehicle. Yes, it's a GM, but it's a Toyota, so it's not Dexron, so it's T4. And anyway, we've got our item here. We're ready to go ahead and fill it. Now, since we recorded every little bit that we drained out of the transmission, all we gotta do is put in what we took out and then do a final check. Yum. Now we're going to go ahead and add four quarts, 14 ounces, which is what we recorded. You may record different when you do yours. So don't just go by ours. And also we're going to do a full check. Um, when we're done, we'll get this up to operating temperature and we'll do a check. We're probably not going to share that on this video because this isn't a full how to, but you've seen other videos where we've done that. And uh, essentially what you do, you bring it up to operating temperature, uh, just let it run in, in the driveway. And then slowly put it through all the gears from park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, one, whatever is on there, all the way. Work your way back up. And then uh, most of them leave it in park with the engine running. And you come out, you pull the dipstick, and you check it. Okay, we'll put our dipstick in until we test it later. All right, and as you can see, I think you can see. We're replacing all those uh, little rusty old screws with push pins. So all we had to do was pull out the uh, little yellow inserts, the plastic inserts, and then you're pretty much just left with uh, the hole that you can go ahead and pop one of these in. And push it, and it locks it in. Got one more to do here. Look at that. All right, that solves all of our falling heat shield problems. Once that was done, we moved on with very little fanfare to go ahead and replace the spark plugs. So as we were taking the bolts off that hold the cover, one of them ended up taking one of the studs that goes into the valve cover. Now that's not a huge deal. All we had to do here was go ahead and retighten that stud. And that goes to 89 inch pounds. Next, just remove the electrical connectors on the coil packs. There we go. Now we'll just go ahead and remove the bolts that hold down the coil packs. and then just pull out the coil packs. You might need to twist them a little bit to get them loose. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the spark plugs themselves. Now, I like to do these one at a time, replacing with the new ones. That way I don't leave the spark plug hole open for something to fall in. Now, we are using a nice spark plug socket from GearWrench. I'll link to that in the video. It's magnetic and it makes pulling the spark plugs out nice and easy. I know I don't have external audio, so sorry for the quality, but I was always curious, um, when you look up spark plugs for these, the Vibe shows it an AC Delco, and it says it's the OEM one, and then Toyota shows an NGK plug. So I'm putting NGKs in here, but I'm curious what's gonna come out. Is it gonna be a Toyota NGK plug, or is there actually Pontiac putting in AC Delco plugs? It's a Denso, Denso Iridium. Uh, I doubt these have been changed before, but <laughs> at any rate, these are Denso Iridium. So Denso is uh, often an OEM used by GM, so who knows? Now when putting in the new spark plugs, we always use a little dab of anti-seize on the threads to prevent galling. And of course, we're going to torque these to specification. When I'm putting spark plugs back in, I like to do it by hand at first. I like to feel that the threads are engaging properly, that it's not cross-threading. 
And if you just go in there and start cranking it down, you always run the risk of a cross thread. And if you cross thread the head, well, you're gonna have a much larger job to do. So always take the time here, make sure they're going in by hand before you tighten them down. We'll share links to the spark plugs that we used in the video. You can check the video description for everything you need. And then of course, we'll go ahead and torque these to 13 pound feet. Don't over tighten them. Remember, aluminum heads, you can actually cause a lot of damage by over tightening them. So we'll go with the 13 pound feet recommendation. Put a little dielectric grease on the boots. Slide them back home. Once you have the coil packs in with the dielectric grease on the end, you can go ahead and reinstall the coil pack bolts. Now just a note, these torque to 80 inch pounds. When reconnecting the electrical connectors, be sure to push them far enough in that they lock in place. And finally, we can reinstall the cover. That's just a couple of the push pins, but also two nuts. Now the book says to go ahead and torque them to 80 inch pounds, and well, since we had the wrench there ready to go, that's what we did. And with that, the spark plugs are replaced. I gotta say, doing an inline four engine is usually pretty simple, but this one was quite easy. Now that pretty much wraps up our video for today, but we do have a few more clips from our Vibe that we'll try to get up here on YouTube. Now in the meantime, if you like what you see, well, we'd appreciate it if you drop us a like, drop us a subscribe, because we'll certainly have more for you here on Vortex Garage.